Meredith Goldstein is the Love Letters columnist at the Boston Globe and a friend of the broadcast. And the second season of her podcast, Love Letters, is now out. Meredith, welcome back to the show. It's always good to see you. Thank you for having me. So, yeah, the second season uh, of your podcast is out. The mm -hmm. first season, you explored breakups. Yes. How to get over a breakup. And now you're covering how to meet someone. Right. We call it the prequel. You can't get dumped until you meet someone. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> So yes, it's all about how to meet someone in this day and age, what's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. And we have some, you know, after doing a whole season about breakups, it's nice to talk to people about their love stories mm -hmm. and the their falling in love stories. Interesting thing these days, I think, about meeting someone are the dating apps. Yeah. That we've sort of gone, you know, Match.com sort of had a huge wave and there's been Bumble and Hinge and there are so many. Um, do you find that there's sort of a new popular app every six months or is there one that is consistently a good place to meet people? You know, I think these apps are great at rebranding themselves, right? Ah. I see that Hinge right now has a whole rebranding and I think that for some people they get sick of one, they try another. There are very niche uh, apps like Dog Lovers and, um, mm. you know, so uh, I think some people can find their way to those apps. But at the end of the day, I think people wind up in those original you know, dating sites turned apps and, and even Tinder because it's got, you know, a, a huge amount of people on them. And that swipe left, swipe right function is really, mm -hmm. it's simple. You, yes. know, you either do or you don't want to meet <laughs> this person. Throughout the second season of Love Letters, you're following a woman. She's in her 40s. She's 44. Her yes. name is Erin, and she's looking for love. Uh, why did you zero in on her story? Well, we knew we were going to have people telling their stories in every episode, but I wanted one consistent narrative, and I thought, what is it like to be exhausted by dating? That's, that's a really typical mm -hmm. letter I see that dating fatigue, we call it. And Erin wrote me a letter after meeting me at a Love Letters event, and she said, I am so sick of dating. What can I do if I want to meet someone? And I called her and I said, would you let us follow you? So she's an incredible sport, and basically week to week, we're, we're getting a sense of her life. And some weeks, she does nothing. Some weeks, she has a date from an app. Um, some weeks, she you know, tries to go out in the world and meet people that way. So it's been a real learning experience just to see what her life is like. And did she end up finding someone? Well, we are still in progress so we're you know we're really up to the moment on this podcast so people have said to me like are you going to couple her off and of course narratively that would be lovely but you know I also want to give an accurate showing of what it's like to be single so I think Aaron just you know wants to see what potential is out there there are probably people out there watching who don't have someone who want to meet someone is there a best way you think or is, is that really individual a best way um, I think it's very individual but I also think that you got to do what you like to do right and I think you do have to probably get out of the house and maybe get off your phone sometimes but um, you know you got you got to see I think there are a lot of people who think they have to you know play a sport they don't want to play or a class they don't want to learn anything about and you don't have to do that it's like yeah. finding hobbies and activities and apps even that naturally appeal to you All right. and you are the love letters columnist yes at the Globe, so you're doing this week in week out what are some of the best questions you've received, things that leap right to mind over the last year or so? In the last year, I think people are really trying to figure out how nice they have to be to exes and people from their former lives online. Mm. You know, there's so many ways we can orbit each other. That's a word that's thrown around a lot now. You have two dates with someone, they're following you on Snapchat. Facebook, all of these other platforms, is it rude to block them? Do you have to stay in touch with them? I think because there are all of these sort of, you know, far away, you know, methods of spying on each other and staying in someone's life, people don't know when to disconnect. I mean, we've had letters about Venmo. People see oh, right. each other's oh, Venmo trends. Yeah. Going, right? so, so what do you tell them? Uh, I tell them to block. I tell them that if you were, you know, you would you would not really want to talk to pe these people in person, that it's not rude to block. It's like a part of life and it's okay. Mm. I hate blocking. I know. I, do. But I hate it's a thing. It's, it's like you're hard, sending that message to that person. That you that, care? That, that you, you care too much to see it? Yeah. But I think it's okay. And I think that, you know, listen, if you wouldn't walk up to the person at a party, you probably shouldn't be following their feed. Well, because it can be a little stalkerish, right? Yeah, and it can, you can you're create. You're not dating anymore, but you can still see and, where they're coming and you can it. create a narrative right if you see your ex partner like you know buying things on Venmo you might create a whole story about what's happening there that mm. is not true what were some issues 10 years ago that people asked all the time that you don't hear about anymore snooping the first two years of love letters everybody was breaking into each other's email accounts mm. texts and I was trying to figure out why don't people send me snooping letters anymore and I think the reason is that because 
we are so available on social media that you can really figure out what your partner ate for breakfast, where they went after that. In some cases, you can track them geographically. So I think in year one and year two, people were like, oh, I need to figure out what my significant other is doing. Now they're like, I know exactly what they're yeah. doing. So no, there's no more need for snooping. We have absolutely yeah. no, no people privacy. Did, so they, they, people didn't stop snooping. They just... Now they can do it without having to break the law. Yeah, break into yeah. someone's account. You just see it right there. Yeah. Here I thought people were respecting each other's privacy, and then I thought, oh no, they don't even need to anymore. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Meredith Goldstein, uh, the new podcast, Love Letters, second season is out, and of course the Love Letters column in the Globe. Thank you so much. It's always good to see you. Thank you for having. We'll be glued to the podcast. All right, Meredith, thanks so much.